Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's always fun, like when you first initially hit that live button, you're like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been like a crazy morning. I always try to plan too much stuff in the morning mm -hmm. and then I'm like running around. Yeah, that happens. I don't know why I do that to myself. Well, if you don't have a full day, you you won't get half the stuff done. So mm -hmm. at least I kind of do that to myself too. And then I feel really glad if I got half of it done. Yeah. <laughs> but I did make time to get some coffee, some ice cream. Oh, smart. So that, that'll help me. Yes. <laughs> that'll be good. Yeah. So we'll just wait for some people to hop on and then we'll start chit-chatting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And where do you see that? Um, so I see it um, like a, above my head. Um, I see three people are on. So hello to to those who hopped on with us. And it says live. So I don't know if you see that. Yes, I see live. I don't see um, I don't see who's on. But yeah. Okay. Some of it might be my staff too. So if Aaron's oh. watching or Brad or whoever, I can't see the names of the people, but we're glad we have some people watching us. And Absolutely. I have from, uh, today we're going to be talking about from, I have Krissa, um, who's the expert in from. And uh, she's going to talk about uh, just some common questions that people have about the food, about the sourcing, maybe yep. the ingredients, yep. storing food, um, how you can rotate the foods and formulas and things like that. And so, Chris, uh, why don't you tell us how long you've been with From? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come and talk to everybody today. I'm really excited. Um, I've been with From for about five years. Um, and I've been in the pet industry for a long, long time, but um, I was very excited to have the opportunity to come and work for From. From, um, as I know you know, Brittany, but a lot of people may not know, um, the, it's a family owned and operated company that's been in business since 1904. Yeah. So yeah. incredibly long history um, in, in the pet industry. Um, and we also have, um, you know, a, a long line of, um, health and animal nutrition behind us um, with um, we we actually developed the first canine and feline distemper vaccine which a lot of people don't know with the help of um, some veterinarians from the University of Minnesota um, mm -hmm. so we have been in the pet industry for a long long time yes yeah. <coughs> oh sorry, sorry people are here back on the computer here um, well, awesome. And so Chris has got some bags, you know, beside her and yep. we're going to go through some different lines of from, so it's for dogs and cats, different life stages, um, life stages. And what do you guys call it? Like life styles kind of too. Life right. stage, life styles. Exactly. Life stage, lifestyle. So we, we pretty, we have some just pretty distinct different product lines um and one of them is um sort of the tip of the iceberg here is going to be our from classic um and now i i actually have a little sheet here so it, it comes in um the pup the puppy adult and the, the red bag here is the senior the pink bag is puppy and the purple bag is for adult um and so that that is um sort of the tip of the iceberg that's going to be our most limited ingredient um it's going to be um great for dogs who have any sensitive tummy issues um great for transitioning from maybe grocery type brands um it is a nice very economical price point product um you notice that i have this bag here that is open um, because this is a food that um i feed my own dog um so i like wholeheartedly believe in this product um, it is a chicken and rice based diet um, and it has a really wonderful ingredient in there called beet pulp. And if your dog ever has any um, upset tummy, sometimes we run into dogs that um, for whatever reason seem to have, if either they got into something or they genetically seem to have something um, with their gut where you can't get a good stool um, or a firm stool. Um, this is a great product to go to, the Prime Classic, because that is... Um, it's going to be very gentle on their system, but the bee pulp is really going to help get that dog's system in order very rapidly. So that's one, again, that I really wholeheartedly believe in. 
Yeah. And then sort of the, um, the next step in line with the Fron products is going to be our gold line. And I have a sample of that here. Our gold line is what um, you had referred to as our life stage lifestyle line. And so that's going to be um, for puppy, um, adult, senior, um, all the different life stages that a dog has, including weight management. Um, and those are going to be, um, you know, very easy choices for the consumer. I have a puppy. Well, I want to look at a puppy food. Um, my dog is an older dog. We want to look at a senior. Those types of choices. And then um, the next step in the line is going to be our four star line. Um, and that is where we're going to be looking at rotation. And so four star um, is going to have the highest inclusion of meat. It's going to have fruits and vegetables included in that diet. And then it's really one that we want to encourage pet parents to feel, feel very comfortable in rotating. So a lot of times we'll see, and I will hear too, customers will come in and I'll say, well, what from recipe are you feeding? And they'll say, oh, um, game bird. And they will just feed game bird. And I think a lot of times people don't understand that, um, yeah, your dog can go ahead and eat just game bird, but to really um, utilize this line to its fullest uh, potential really is best to rotate those um, recipes. And we do have um, 16 four-star recipes right now to choose from um, grain in and grain free recipes um, that are, that's really run the gamut of flavors and um, proteins and different fruits and vegetables that are included. So um, really going to give your animal, your dog um, and cat, we do have cat recipes in four-star a wide variety of um, flavors and, and choices. So that's kind of where we're at with um, the dry recipes. Yeah, that's good that you mentioned all of those. There are a lot, and this is for dogs and cats. We have both lines at the store. Like Krista mentioned, there's both grain in and grain free. So lots of variety in these, lots of meat proteins in these. Um, I put on there in the comments, if you all have any questions, please ask. This is the perfect time to ask Krista while she's on. But I'll also be commenting and just throwing in some things as you're talking, some pointers and um, you know, like you said, the, the four star line is a really good rotational diet, um, mm -hmm. which is going to help your dogs or your cats not get bored eating the same thing. You know, this is a great way to throw in a new protein source or a new flavor so that your pets stay interested when you're feeding them. Absolutely. Absolutely. The and you will know too, you, you will know what, you know, I know with my dog, um, they, you will quickly discover their favorites. And so when I put Haas and duck and pepper down, that happens to be our rabbit and duck recipe. Mm -hmm. um, they start hopping around a little bit more. And so I know that that happens to be one of their favorites. So um, it, it is really fun for consumers to kind of go up and down that line. And Brittany has samples in the store. So a great way to try um, a, and see, does my dog like this one? Is this one that they seem to be very excited about? Is to try it. And preventing boredom is huge. Yeah. Um, you know, for myself, I certainly don't want to eat the same thing every day. So yes. variety is the spice of life when it comes to four star for sure. Yeah, we have the four star recipes and the uh, gold line recipe samples. We have just about every flavor that um, Krista said there's what over 17 varieties for the dog. Um, there's actually 16 for the dog. Yeah. 16. So we have a lot of free samples that we give out to people in the store. This is a cat sam sample actually. Um, it's a really good serving size. It, you know, you can sprinkle it over, um, your pet's food and see if they kind of pick out these pieces or you can like put it in a separate dish and see if they go up to it. Um, if you have a picky cat or a picky dog, I always go to from. I'm like, just, mm -hmm. it seems like it's so rich and flavorful that I rarely have somebody come in and say their pet didn't like the from samples. Right. So, if you have a very finicky pet, I would say go for one of the from samples. I like it too because the packaging is clear so you can see the size and the shape of the kibble. And I might ask you that question, like while we're talking about the kibble, why are why are some of the shapes and sizes different with the from recipes? Right. So um that is a that is really some of it is very unique to from, but 
um, the bottom line on our shapes or on our sizes is that we're we're cooking our food. We're 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 creating that kibble size for palatability di and digestibility. Um, and, but a fun little fact on it is some of the kibble shapes um, are really cute. Like um, I mentioned, Haas and duck and pfeffer. That happens to be a rabbit kibble shape. Um, lamb and lentil is a little lamb shape. Um, we have our cowboy recipe, which is um, the Rancho Rosa, and that is a cowboy hat. So a lot of fun things, not just for your dog, but for um, you as well to kind of go up and down that line and discover our fun, our fun shapes on our foods. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you how to do like this. As I've observed different cat food, um, the from, ooh, like it's so little. The cat yes. food is... It's just some of the tiniest little um, dry kibble pieces for cats that I've seen compared to some other uh, dry kibble recipes. So um, the uh, kitten gold recipe is real little and nice. If anybody watching or going to watch later, if you have a little new kitten um, or an older cat, you know, these kibble pieces, um, just noticing compared to other dry food is really little. And I like that Fromm makes really small cat food pieces. Right. Cat and dog. And um, and really this one, I don't know if you can see how big that is. Um, that's really our largest kibble size. And that is in our white fish and potato. And in our newest recipe, the ancient gold also is this um, triangular shape. Um, so it is it is pretty small. Um, but that is for um, for the digestibility of it. We don't want to have a giant um, a giant kibble. Um, it you know we it it really does help the palatability and the digestibility. Um, a lot of times we will see animals who um, tend to gobble their food and inhale and quite literally um, you know just swallowing the food whole. Um, and so we have we have a greater surface area with that smaller kibble to really kind of help that food break down in the system. But if you are experiencing that with your dog, um, I would just suggest to um, add some water to your dog's food. Um, that's a really quick and easy way to um, slow your dog down. There's also slow down bowls that Brittany sells that are very useful. Um, but I, I, I really personally like to add water and I do add water to my dog's food. Um, for a couple different reasons. Number one, um, one of my dogs has a tendency to inhale. And I know that if um, a, not enough water is put on her food, and really we want to see that water in about a one-to-one -one ratio. So if it's a half a cup of dry, we want to see about a half a cup of water. Um, and just cool tap water, not hot water, not co ice cold water, but just cool room temperature, you know, cool tap water. Um, put that on the food right before you feed. Um, what's going to happen is the animal is going to drink all that water first and then they will um, start eating the kibble. Um, and that just naturally slows that animal down. And the second benefit to that is that you know how much water your dog has ingested during the day. So if you leave a bowl of food out or a bowl of water out, excuse me, you may not know, you know, did has my dog been drinking it? Did the cat dump it over? I don't know. Um, but if you watch your dog eat that or drink that half cup of water with their food, you know that they are hydrated. That is a really good tip. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I never know how much they're how much they do drink, and I know that's a big problem for cats too. Not Absolutely. getting enough water in their Absolutely. diet. Absolutely. You yeah. may have a little bit more difficulty with a cat because really cats are the boss. And we all know that yes. <laughs> so they may decide, you know what, I do not want you putting water on my food. And so you, it may be a little bit of trial and adjustment with a cat, but um, certainly a great way to add hydration for a cat is to add canned. Um, canned, canned food is a terrific way to add hydration, especially for those cats that you know are um, not getting the water that they so desperately need. Um, also for dogs, um, we also want to add canned to dogs um, for hydration. That's a terrific source of, of water for them. I'm going to Raleigh up. Raleigh's crying. <laughs> like every one of my videos, either the cat's on my lap or walking across the screen or Raleigh. So oh. there, buddy. Now you can. Now you can oh, my gosh. Is he ever cute? <laughs> He's awesome. He loves lamb and lentil. I okay. got him on from 
and lamb and lentils seem to be his very favorite and the beef frittata, but he really likes lamb and lentils. Yep, they do. They pick out their favorites. So it is, it's really fun to go up and down the line and kind of see, and they will, they will guide you to what, you know, yeah, yeah. this one's good, but I really like this one. So yeah. Um, beef frittata actually that you mentioned it, it is in our five pound bag, which is typically used for smaller dogs. Um, that is our number one selling four star product. So beef frittata um, is a great one to start with. Yeah. The lamb and lentil has cute little shapes. I guess maybe that's yep. supposed to be like a lamb or. It is maybe. lamb. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. It is a lamb. Yeah. Yeah. So Raleigh, I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of like just butting in. I don't know if you're going in an order, but Raleigh's actually eight years old. So do you want to talk a little bit about going back to um, the Frog and Gold line? You guys Absolutely. have um, you have puppy um, and kitten, then you have adult, and then you have senior um, for cats and dogs. So can we like kind of talk about each one of those gold lines and like what's a good fit for each one and each um, stage of their life? Absolutely. Okay. So um, in the gold line, like you had mentioned, we have our puppy recipes and you will notice that we have grain in and grain free puppy recipes and they come in either a pink bag or a blue bag. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reason for that. The pink bag is going to be for puppies whose adult weight is going to be under 50 pounds. Um, and the blue bag is going to be for those larger dogs whose adult weight will be over 50 pounds. I mean, the big component to that is going to be the calcium. The calcium level is is been lowered in the the blue bag because we don't want those large and giant breeds to grow too fast. Calcium is actually a growth accelerator, and so um, we have monitored the level of calcium in that larger um, large breed puppy formula to accommodate um, the growth rate and and for that um, for that larger breed puppy. Um, and really what we're looking for um, with that is we don't want the bones and the joints to grow at different rates. We want to make sure that that mm -hmm. ball and socket joint, um, it, where everything is, is growing where it needs to be growing and we're not going to have any imbalances for that animal. Um, and it really is very important. A lot of times we will see breeders who know and understand that process. And what they'll do is they'll feed um, like a giant breed puppy, like a St. Bernard or a Great Dane puppy. Um, they'll feed them an adult food because what they're trying to do is to have a lower calcium because they know and understand that process. Um, however, the problem with that is, is that that growing puppy does has different um, nutrient requirements because their body is growing in different things in their body. You know, their organs and things also need specific nutrients to get to their proper um, um, potential, their, their, their growth potential. And so, um, Fromm has already done that for those large and giant breeds um, in that we have the proper nutrient balance, but we also have um, that lowered calcium so we don't have those dogs growing too fast. So um, talk with the, I always encourage people to talk with their veterinarian, um, come in and talk to you um, as the store, store owner and dial in what is the best food for my puppy and where's, um, um, where should I be, be having this dog? And if they're right on the cusp, you know, I, I, it's not, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world if they're going to be, you know, 45 pounds and they end up being 50 pounds and you fed them on um, the pink bag. That's, you know, what we're really concerned with is that bigger dog. Um, so that's an important component in the puppy. And then our adult um, products, we have adult gold, which um, is um, a chicken based product. And that is our number one selling um, um, product across the country. Um, we also do have that in a grain-free option, and that is a um, red meat-based, chicken-free, grain-free um, in the Heartland Gold line. Um, and um, then after the adult, we have our senior, um, and that's actually a recipe that I I feed. Um, Harley is one of my dogs, and he eats the, the senior recipe as well as um, the senior um, classic and white fish and potato. Those are his that he typically eats. Um, and that's going to accommodate the dog with a slower metabolism as they're slowing down and getting older and those types of things. Um, and then the other product that we have in the gold line is going to be our weight management. Mm -hmm. And that is a very specific product. And it is, it's really intended for dogs um, who do need to lose weight. 
Um, and so weight loss, um, I mean, we should probably just talk about weight loss because that is um, such a huge problem. And when we know that when our dogs are overweight, um, it really opens them up to a whole host of, of potential issues. You know, just like with people, um, when we are overweight, um, we have more prevalence to um, arthritis and heart problems and, and things like that. And so if we can help prevent that by getting that animal into a healthy weight, um, we can potentially um, lower their risk of some of these other kinds of factors like diabetes and things like that. So um, how do you know if your dog should be on a weight management recipe? That's a question that we get a lot. How do I know? So I guess first thing I do as a pet parent is um, we really need to have that discussion about how much are we feeding our dogs? Because I think um, it is very, very easy to overlove our animals and to overfeed our animals. And so take a look at your bag and, and on all your bags of from, um, you'll see on the back, I don't know if you can see it because of the glare, but you will be able to see that there is a feeding guideline. Mm -hmm. and so take a look at the feeding guideline. And when I say guideline, I really mean it's a guideline. Um, it's not hard and fast and there is some trial and adjustment. So um, use that as a guideline. Am I feeding that proper proportion uh, portion to my animal? Um, and I will tell you, this is what happens at my house. So um, Carly, Carly is 25 pounds and he gets, he gets about this much food. So it's, this is a half a cup and I go under half a cup and that's how much he gets at breakfast. And that's how much he gets at dinner when I feed him. So. <laughs> when my husband feeds them this is how much he gets and you can see that's quite a lot more food and so if that kind of thing is happening at your house you need to have a discussion that's too much and you'll know it's too much for a lot of there there'll be some cues to you that you're overfeeding your dog um one of the real quick and easy ways is um is your dog stool loose um if they're being overfed they're it's too rich for them and they are going to have a looser stool and when you dial it into where um, this is really a good fit for him, this is about how much this dog should be eating, um, you'll see a nice form stool, and not to talk about poop too much, but it's important. <laughs> um, it will be um, not, it won't be dry, it won't be wet or runny. Oh, what it, it, it looks like Tootsie Rolls. Mm -hmm. um, so it should look like that. It should be segmented in, and it should be um, a, of a nice consistency. Um, and so when you're overfeeding like this, you're going to run into problems. You're also going to see um, when your dog goes to the veterinarian, you're going to know that they're going to say, mm, uh oh, you know, we got a little chubby problem here. We need to dial it back. And so really monitor um, and make sure everybody in the family knows that this is how much the dog should be eating. A second thing to look at is how often are we treating? Um, and I don't know if you saw that here. Harley is right down here. I'll pick him up here in a minute so you guys can see him. But, um, he gets treats a lot. And so I, I do try and give him um, Crunchios, which are two calories, um, because you know he gets one when he comes in because we don't have a fenced in yard and I want to encourage him to come on back. Um, but how often are we treating our animals? Are we giving them lots and lots of treats during the day? Um, that's an important component to, um, to take into consideration when that dog is, um, you know, when you look at how much, how many calories is he getting? How much food is he getting? Um, so that's something else to, to really um, monitor. Um, and then if you know that, you know what, I'm feeding this dog in the proper portions, I'm not giving too many treats, but this dog is overweight and needs some assistance. That's when we wanna look to our weight management recipes. And we do actually have three weight management recipes. We have our grain-free um, Heartland Gold, um, Gold Coast actually, weight management and that is a fish based recipe um, we do and then we have our um, our weight management that is our chicken based and that's just in the regular gold line and then we also have um, a gold line for large breed dogs over 50 pounds and that will be our large breed weight management recipe so three recipes to choose from um, and the actually the large breed I did not mention that is a turkey liver base um, so yeah. it's going to have um, um, nice quality proteins um, and it also will have um, carbohydrates that are going to help um, assist that dog. It will also have a supplement in there called L-carnitine, which is an amino acid that assists with weight loss. 
um, higher fiber so that dog has that sense of fullness because we all know when we're trying to lose weight the most difficult thing is that feeling of hunger and um, we don't want to feel hungry that's uncomfortable we certainly don't want our dogs to feel hungry um, and also really important to you know the thing that you know you can dial your food, dog's food back but um, we want to make sure that that dog is also as they're losing weight that they're still getting the nutrients that they need so if you're under feeding to lose weight um you could be missing out on nutrients and we don't want that to happen either and that's why the, the weight loss um the weight management recipes were formulated because we want to make sure that we're still continuing to support that dog's um, system with all the proper vitamins minerals and nutrients that they need to be healthy but um help them losing the weight um, and I will tell you from personal experience, I do pug rescue. I have fostered a, quite a number of pugs and they have a tendency to be a little on the chubby side and I've used it and it, it does work. Um, once that animal loses the, the weight and gets into a, that healthy weight range, um, then that's at that point you want to also consider, you know, what do we do from here? Do we um, put them back on, um, you know, your, your four star recipe that you were feeding? Or do we do something else? And it really is something that um, everybody that is feeding that dog really needs to have input in. Um, because if that dog is like, for instance, I had a dog that was very food mo motivated and he was constantly doing tricks. Um, and my kids would just, I mean, they loved it. They were having so much fun with this dog and he would do high fives. And every time he did something, he got a treat, he got a treat, he got a treat. And so I knew once he reached his desired, you know, the desired weight that the veterinarian wanted him to be at, that he was going to gain that weight right back if we didn't monitor it. So what I did was I would feed him um, a four star recipe for his breakfast. And I knew that he was going to be getting a few extra treats during the day. And so what I did to compensate for that is I continued to feed him weight management for dinner. And we had him for three years. We adopted him when he was 10 and he passed away when he was 13. And during the whole rest of his life that we had him, he never regained his weight. So he stayed within that healthy rate, weight range and really didn't fluctuate. And so we were able to dial it in for him. And that's really what the um, pet parent needs to do is to just, what is my lifestyle? Um, how is this animal reacting towards food? And there's all kinds of different um, variables that you need to take into consideration with the weight loss. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you just saw the comment from uh, Ashlyn, but she said that she has a golden retriever puppy and um, he is on the large breed pus puppy recipe and really likes it, loves it. So um, awesome. yeah, thanks Ashlyn for commenting and, um, and, you know, Chrissy, you were talking about the crunchy oat treat. So if uh, you are training your puppy and uh, you haven't tried any of the from treats, there's, gosh, I think we have five flavors now. Yeah, them. we do. We do have five flavors. And I'll show you the little sheet on those. And I will tell you, um, I'll show you. Oh, I'll get, I don't know where Harley went to. Um, so crunchy oats, five, five different flavors. And. Oh, I'm not very good. Can you see how big that is? I mean, that's a good size treat. And that is two calories. So, um, and come here, Harley. <laughs> I'll see. He'll... Here's my little. Here's my little Harley. Aww. And you can hear how loud it is. They are. They're so like airy and crunchy. They are. They're really crunchy and they're really fun. We do a lot of things on social media where people can win treats um, by uploading pictures of your dog with the crunchios. Um, and so um, that's really fun. But it, it, it's a fun way, you know, and treats are fun. Treats are an, a, a really great way to engage with your pet, to play. And, and we don't ever want to forget about that. You know, food is serious and we want to, you know, be you know, very diligent about what we're feeding our pet, but that does, it does still translate into treats. And so while treats are fun, um, they also need to be healthy and nutritious. And so, you know, good size treat. And then the five recipes, um, you know, again, with the fun, and I don't know if you can, can <laughs> see. So turkey pumpkin cram pow, um, we have the pot roast punchers, um, the um, berry blast, which yeah. is 
I think the blueberry blast might be my personal favorite because when I open them up, you just, it smells like a blueberry muffin to me. They're just, they smell so good. Um, pot roast punchers. Um, I said that, um, banana cablamas. So a banana recipe. Um, and then we have pumpkin cram pow and our smoke and cheese plosions. And the smoke and cheese plosions are also really, really popular. Um, but you know, mix and match the recipes and they're, they're just a lot of fun. A nice, um, th there is a nice six ounce bag. So you get a decent quantity. Um, and there's a little window on the back that'll, that'll show you when, um, you're getting low and obviously you'll know, but mm -hmm. yeah, so we love our treats. Absolutely. That's one thing I love about um, the, the unique flavor of it, down to the treats, having the blueberry and the banana and the pot roast and the different, you know, specialty, uh, the four star specialty foods, the the duck and the um, what else is in that duck and Pfeiffer or the rabbit. rabbit. So rabbit and duck. Um, rabbit, yeah. Our beef recipes are really popular. Our Highland beef. Yes. Um, we have a Z Lambder now, which um, that's a very new one for us. And that is a um, grain inclusive um, lamb recipe. Um, so, you know, lamb and oats and um, all those good healthy things. And then I mentioned, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, we have that one in the store now. We've had, because um, we had some people requesting it. And so I will just say, um, for people who are watching this now or rewatching, if you go to fromfamily.com and you see like a particular recipe that you want to try and we don't have it in the store, just let us know because we can get all of them, any of them um, that we've talked about today, even the classics, even any of those, you know, special large breed weight management if you want the grain in or grain free. Um, because we do have people that will ask us to special order and that's no problem at all. Like we we get um we have like little special stacks in the back for our our specialty orders so um but anyway so that's that's how we started carrying the zeal lamb uh, lamber is because we had so many people asking for it and then mm -hmm. i was like you know what we just need to order a bunch of these and put them on our shelf with the other oh, cool. horse bar line right. so um it's a green bag um if you guys are watching and you want to you know get your dog a new recipe that one's been selling really well and then the other two really popular ones for us at the store has been pork and applesauce lately, and then the duck olive veg. So those are just two um, go-to recipes that I know your dogs are going to love if you want a grain in option. Those are those are great. And don't they sound delicious? Pork and applesauce. Pork yeah. and applesauce sounds I'm so in. good. <laughs> and then duck, so you mentioned going to our website. And so I'm just going to show you this really quickly. Um, if you sign up on fromfamily.com um, next week, um, now we do this all, you know, if you sign up, you only need to sign up one time and we don't bombard you with a ton of emails or anything like that. We don't sell your email address to anyone. It's really just for us. Well, we will reach out to you when we have a new product, um, like Brittany said, um, so you will know, hey, go to your local pet store and, and ask about Z Lambda. But um, one of the cool things that we do, um, in addition to that, is we will send out coupons for free product. And so if we have um, a new can or a new treat, you may see um, a coupon for that. Um, many times during the year, really, I want to say yes. You know, yes, three, four, five times a year. I don't even know. So it depends on how many products we launch during the year. But Black Friday, we have had a history of since ever since I worked for the company and certainly long before that. On Black Friday, we always do um, a free small bag with purchase. So um, sign up at fromfamily.com mailing list. Um, it's slash mailing list. And it, you will be able to get onto that um, and sign up with your name and, and everything. And then the coupon will be generated to you. And you'll be able to take advantage of that free bag. And it's buy, buy a, um, any size bag and get a free small. Mm -hmm. So for dog and cat. So yeah. that's, that's really, really fun. And people look forward to that all year. Yeah. Are you going to get, dog people are going to get a free four or five pound bag of food for the cat. Um, free bag, you'll get a two pound bag of kitty, kitty food. So 
it's a good deal. And, yeah. and yeah, like you said, there's multiple times throughout the year where I will see people have their from coupons and I'm like, that's awesome. Like I, I love seeing those. Obviously we honor all of them. Um, I'm happy to see them. And um, there's some good ones coming out for, uh, for black Friday and small business Saturday too, I believe. Right. Um, well, it, I can't remember how long it just the email just came out um how long the coupon is good for but i believe it's good for that weekend yeah. so so yeah, yeah if you print it up you've got uh, several days to, to yeah. take advantage of it That's but yeah it's a good, yeah it's a great way to try a product that maybe you were thinking about trying or one that um you know just maybe a little bit out of your normal wheelhouse and you're like oh well it's free let me try it and um then you've got a whole new one in your in your rotation which is great and speaking of rotation i do want to make sure that everybody understands um once you're feeding a from recipe you don't necessarily have to stick with all classic or all you know gold or all four star um in fact you saw that i had all three of these different so um i, I feed harley um classic gold and four star all during the week i mean he'll get different he may get um classic for breakfast and he may get a four star for dinner and the next day he might get gold for breakfast and dinner you know depending upon what what bags i have open um but it is absolutely okay to go between those lines um and certainly you know we want to be cautious about you know if you if you know that your dog is really sensitive to those kinds of switches you might want to be a little more cautious but for the most part um, we don't have any issues with with dogs um going up and down um, and rotating between those those different lines too. So that's important to realize because sometimes, you know, you may be feeding classic um, for your everyday and then say, for example, it's Christmas or um, it's the dog's birthday and you wanna give them a special treat. And so you decide, you know what, let's do, um, you know, the Highlander beef for his birthday. Um, and that's certainly fine to do that. So, so don't be shy. Um, and then as long as I'm on that topic, I do want to talk about keeping the food in the bag. Yes. Okay. So um, we didn't talk, did we talk, we didn't talk about that yet, did we? Mm -mm. The reason why. Okay. So um, the bag is really intended to protect that food. And so um, you'll notice on um, the smaller bags, we do have a Ziploc on top and that's really you know, we really, that's a kind of a reminder, please keep the food in the bag. Um, a lot of times um, people will buy um, special containers to store their their dog's food in, and that's fine. Um, but what we don't want is we don't want that food to get dumped directly into that bin so the food is touching that bin. Um, the, the bins are um, typically made from plastic, and plastic is a, is a you know, petroleum based product and it is um, porous. And so um, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but if you do that, um, take your finger and run it along the edge of that container because I guarantee you it will be greasy. Mm -hmm. And if you try to wash that container out, um, you may be able to get that grease residue off of there um, with like some Dawn or something like that, but you will never ever be able to get that smell out of there. You will always know that that container had dog food in it because really um, the dog food and the plastic at over time become one. Um, and I know this from, you know, just, I had a guy who um, he had to um, um, relinquish his dog and he, he brought the dog to my house and he was storing the dog and he said, here's all his gear, here's his food. And he was storing the dog's food in um, a human food cooler, um, which, you know, you would think that would be perfectly fine because it's intended for human food. Um, it's just to Harley barking. Um, okay. But I will tell you that I tried, and it was a really nice cooler. And I thought, oh my gosh, I really want to try and see if I can salvage this puppy. And so I put bleach in it, and I I really tried to clean that thing out, and it will never come clean. So it will never, I will never. So really, the point of that whole long story is, please keep the 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 food in the bag, and that this bag is intended to protect that food. Um, you, you had a gentleman on from another pet food company who talked about probiotics. Um, we have pre and probiotics in all of our food and those are live living things and we want to protect them um, for the life of the food. Um, so 
you know, um, keeping the food in the bag is going to be the, uh, the first major step in making sure that food is it retains all that it should be. I mean, all that you're buying, you know, I hate seeing waste. I hate seeing, um, you know, when we pay for something, whether it was $20 or $200, we want to make sure that we get absolutely everything out of that that we can. And so keeping your food safe and protected is going to ensure that everything that's in here is going to get into your dog and into something else. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then the other thing is on the back of the bag, we have printed here and you'll be able to tell um, it's different than the regular script and I'm not showing it correctly, but there's a date code on there. And that date code is really important. We have a date code. Yes, thank you. That is, we have that for each and every batch that we make. Um, so every time we make a batch of food, we take a true random sample of that and we save it in our, it's in our warehouses and it's, it's in what I call a food library. And I'm sure that that's not what they call it, but it helps me to remember that we are saving these, this, this sample of this food. So every bag that Brittany has in her store that has a different date code, we have a sample of that at our warehouse and we keep it for two years. Um, so at, at any time during the life of that product, we can go back and we can look at it, we can examine it, um, we can test it, and we can see if there were, you know, anything an anomalies or anything like that. Um, and so if you have a question about a product and you don't have this date code, there is no way we are going to know where it came from or, or when it came from. Um, so we can always guess and test that way, but it's never going to be as perfect. So. Um, keeping the food in the bag is really um, just a safeguarding measure for um, you for just so many different reasons. So, good point. Yeah, I will say that um, your the website is up and running. If you wanted to watch the video, or we can just tell people who are watching. You know what? Let's try it. Try you want to try the video? Yeah, let's see. Let's do that, and then maybe um, after we watch the video, we can have you highlight some things, and then maybe talk some more about the cans, because I know you have, um, you want to show us what the shredded meats and stuff looks like in those can yeah, recipes, but absolutely. hang on, guys, and let me pull up the videos. But Fromm's website is amazing. There's also, while I'm just kind of browsing and, and pulling up the videos, um, a contact number on there. And I know that there have been times where people had some very specific questions about the Fromm recipes, whether it was for their dog or their cat. And I wasn't quite sure, you know, how to answer them. So we went ahead and called the contact us number and we got to talk to, you know, some nutritionists who are able to help us out, which, you know, I just had, I'm like, I'm going to put you on speaker. I have the customer right here. And it was really nice to get that like direct um, customer service that we needed so that the customer could get the appropriate food that they needed. Absolutely. Our customer service team is very skilled in talking about all different kinds of issues, um, concerns. You mentioned our nutritionist. We do have a nutritionist. We also have a veterinarian. Um, so we, we have resources for those more difficult type questions. And here's the video. All right, guys. So we're going to play this video. And... Foods is an artisan pet food company. We make gourmet foods for dogs and cats. Our pet foods are naturally formulated. That means we use real meat, not fish, seeing and vegetables that are literally delivered to our doorstep every morning. The ingredients going in are real meats and fresh vegetables. You're not uh, seeing same it. Same things. Nope, you would, I am now. Uh, dinner for yourself. You are. Essentially. Yep. The metropolitan city would have fresh produce brought in from all over the country. In this case, instead of delivering to the grocery store, they delivered to a pet food plant. It could be semi loads at a time, but nevertheless, it's the same product that people would serve on their plates for their children at home. Each from recipe, whether it's from our classic, our gold, or our four star line, starts with the real meat or fish as the first ingredient. We then add in a blend of prebiotics and probiotics to aid digestion, and we top it off with Real Wisconsin cheese and whole eggs from local farmers. Day-to-day -day operations here, we blend and cook what we're going to finish that day. We start cooking the meats, we cook the vegetables, so everything that we've mixed and prepared for that day turns into a kibble, and that's when we know we're finished for the day. 
We don't have a lot of automation in our extrusion process here. We do it exactly the way we've always done it. Very, very hands-on so our operators understand what they're making. We're there at the start of each batch. We're down there testing the product with our hands. We're even tasting it at times to make sure that it is up to our, our quality standards. There, there's certain parameters that you just can't program into a machine, where we still take a very hands-on approach to make the food. It's one thing to have these elaborate entrees that have real meat and fish, fresh fruits and vegetables, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter unless your food's safe. And at Frown, we take that extremely seriously. Each batch is sent off to an accredited lab, and we have our own on-site lab. And until both those labs clear our food, we will not ship a single kibble. Fram Classic pays homage to our original Fram family recipe, which we came out with in 1949. It's chicken, brown rice, whole eggs, and Wisconsin cheese. Fram Classic is the ultimate comfort food. Our step up from the Classic line is our gold line. They're based on life stage, so you can feed your puppy gold for your puppy, adult gold for your adult dog, as well as senior gold. Also on that line, we have a weight management formula, as well as large breed and small breed formulas. The inspiration for the Forest Star line is actually pretty simple. It's, it's how we feed our own family. We call it a, a center of the plate mentality, where you have a high quality protein like beef or lamb or duck, and you surround that with sides like sweet potatoes, brown rice, or even cheese. It's variety driven, so your dog can have beef frittata veg for breakfast, duck and sweet potato for lunch, and surf and turf for dinner. I mean, it, there's really no better way to take care of your pet than feeding them well. The main thing that sets our food apart is the time that we take to do it. We know that people, they always gather around the table, that's where they share and break bread, and then Pets, that's a very special time as a cat or dog when their owner is feeding them. So to have that type of variety is really important. And at the same time, deliver unsurpassed nutrition. Good video. I like that. Yeah, that is so nice. They, they put that together just to kind of have a quick overview of our product lines. Um, there are a number of videos on our website, so please feel free to dig around in there. Um, we have one on the family history. Um, you know, you, you probably heard that um, Classic came out in 1949. That's really when we started marketing pet food um, to um, commercially. Um, we were we've been in business since 1904, um, and the and it, it, the family has just sort of it. The products have morphed um, and, and what the business has been since 1904 to now has, has changed dramatically. And it's really interesting to go and take a, a peek at, at the whole history of the Fromm family and, um, and what they have done. It's, it's fascinating, I think. I think it's really cool. yeah, especially yeah. being a fifth generation family owned company. Um, that's really unique in the pet food industry. And. Um, I also love how they support local independent pet stores like Premium Pets. Um, you know, Fromm could sell probably anywhere to anyone, but they really choose to support those brick and mortar stores. And um, I, I really like Fromm for doing that, you know, for focusing on those mom and pop type businesses. So mm -hmm. we, um, that's a great point. We absolutely love that about Fromm. It's what makes our store. A little more unique too is that we are carrying um, brands that we've carefully selected that um, you can't just buy anywhere we want people to come into our store and buy from exclusively from us and um, so that's just one thing I like to point out about from too thank you thanks for pointing that out um, and you had mentioned before the video some of our cans so another really unique thing about from is yay yes um, we all we own and operate our own canning facility, which is very unique in the pet industry. Um, and we're very, very proud of that. So all the care and consideration that goes into our dry recipes um, also goes into our canning facility. Um, so um, two recipes that we have um, here, th these are our remedies products. Um, and these are the only products that we have 
um, that are besides our treats that are not complete and balanced. All of our other cans and all of our other dry um, meal recipes, uh, food recipes are complete and balanced. Um, so, but these ones are not. These ones are really considered um, a dietary supplement. So they're going to be for situational tummy upset. Mm -hmm. um, and really, I think um, you know can we consider them like a band-aid you want to make sure that you have these um, in your pantry um, all of our cans have a three-year shelf life um, so it's a great idea to have a couple of cans on hand um, at some point during three years your dog is probably going to run into something where we're going to need to supplement um, and just so you're aware um, we can supplement 80 percent of the diet um, for a few days you know three four five days something like that um, and then on an ongoing basis, sometimes we have animals that just for whatever reason seem to have a little more sensitive tummy, need a little more assistance. Um, and you can replace 20% of the diet on an ongoing basis. Um, and really, a, it's a gentle product that we have the chicken and white fish or um, the, um, um, I'm sorry, chicken and rice or white fish and potato, pardon me. And then both of those cans are going to have um, some really nice fibers. It's um, pumpkin miscanthus grass um, and chicory root extract and all of those fibers are going to really assist in getting that dog's gut back in order. So a um, great thing to have, especially over the holidays when we know, um, in, you know, stores are going to be closed. Inevitably what happens is, you know, it happens at the worst possible time and then you're stuck. So um, a couple of these on hand is a great idea. And then um, you had showed our frambolaya. This is um, one of our newest um, recipes, and this is a stew product. And I'm just going to open a can for you guys so you can see it. Um, there are, can, if you can read off the five recipes while I'm doing this. Um. The, of the frambolaya? Oh. Okay. So the one that I have right here is a turkey um, and vegetable rice stew. So that's going to be turkey, turkey broth, chicken broth, potatoes, carrots, peas, white rice, dried egg product. So this stuff is packed with. I mean, it looks good enough that we could eat it. <laughs> well, I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I will tell you when, um, I don't know if you can see this. Um, it's super thick. And it is. It's very thick. And it it really, um, can you see that? Um, there you go. Yep. Um, yep. So it, it reminds me, and I don't know why this pops into my head, maybe because I'm from Minnesota and we're big hot dish people, but mm -hmm. it reminds me of a hot dish. And I, it's just um, the, the meat, there's just an abundance of meat, um, vegetables and gravy, and it just um, is very, very appetizing and really makes a terrific topper. Um, but we're seeing a lot of people who are trying these are coming back and buying them again because um, the dogs just really, really are enjoying um, that product. Um, and Harley's getting a little excited here because he can smell it. Um, and then the other one I wanted to open for you guys is our, our shredded product. And so you can see that here. Um, this product um, is a little bit more expensive, but when you when I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. And so you'll see um, why it's expensive because now this is beef. Um, and I'm just going to pull some out here. Um, so you can see this is all, it's all shredded. So it's a different consistency. Can you see that at all? Yeah, try and get a little closer. Um, it's a different consistency than our um, stew product. And this is all just, it's all shredded beef. I mean, it's just, the whole can is just jam packed with beef, vegetables, gravy. I'm spilling it here. <laughs> Um, but just a terrific product. You can see the vegetables, you can see the gravy, but really the thing that really stands out is just the amount of sheer meat that's in there. And it is every time I will tell you, um, we don't open these too terribly often. Um, it's a, it's a treat at our house, but, um, when Harley does get these, every time my husband opens them, he's like, oh, I'm just tempted to take a bite. It looks so good. And it really is just I mean, you can see all that meat in there. So um, it is another one that people will typically use for a topper, although it is also complete and balanced. Um, so you can feed this exclusively um, and, make, and making sure that your dog is getting all the nutrients that they need. Yes. And the cat food cans are pate. Uh, we do right. have some new shreds now. Um, this, So we have two new cat um, recipes. Um, the persnickety here, um, and this is a pate. 
Um, and these are single um, source proteins in the persnickety. Okay. Um, and then um, we do have um, shreds now available for cat as well. So um, the rest of our cat foods are pate, but we do have three flavors of shredded cat. Um, and they're going to look very similar to um, what I just showed you with the dog shreds. Yes. We have a ton of the four-star cat recipes, the pate ones, like again, probably almost every one that you can carry. I have a whole shelf of the from pate cans. Um, most of them, wouldn't you say, are like, they've got a couple different proteins in them. Mm -hmm. um, yes. A lot of a lot of them have some pumpkin in there for that fiber that you talked about, mm -hmm. um, but and we do have the three per snick snickety cans as well. So we have those if your cat if you do just want like a single ingredient or a single protein source with your can, um, and you want that rice option because the four star pate cans are grain free, and then the per snickety are grain in, so it gives you that variety for your cat. It does give you the the variety, and I will say that um, palatability wise, pa um, persnickety is just very very popular with cats. So um, you know it's a it it is a nice price point product as well. So you know really worth giving it a try. I'm um, throwing it in the rotation, um, and again that moisture for cats um, is so so important. So giving them a canned or a wet option is a really smart idea. Awesome. Well, we have totally reached our hour long lunch and learn series and so that timing wise that was so perfect thank you for being available to tell us about from and all of the options for our pets how you can come into our store and check out what we have um i also just want to mention for those who are watching um we have a deal going on with from where if you buy a bag of the from food um we did a video yesterday with andra who is with primal pet foods and we're going to do a little bundle with you guys if you participate you get a bag of from food buy a bag and we're going to give you three dollars off of goat milk and um five dollars off some raw toppers that you can put on that um from kibble for your dog or your cat so i just wanted to mention that again and um don't forget to go to fromfamily.com sign up for those coupons um or for their email list so you can get some really good coupons in your inbox that you can redeem in the store um they send out a lot throughout the year and you're gonna get if you sign up today like chris has said um they're gonna be sending out one for uh buy a bag get a, a bag free so that'll be going on in the store too um anyway so thank you again so much i thought that thank was you for really having me really well and yeah. um, i'm definitely going to be encouraging people um for thanksgiving get your dog a little turkey from balaya can because this will be the perfect like thanksgiving day stew treat while you guys are oh, very much turkey absolutely um, your dog can eat that too and we'll find some good like turkey cat recipes there's definitely some turkey flavored pate cans for we our have a turkey pumpkin cat um oh. which is perfect yes perfect so thank you so much i hope thank you have you. a good thanksgiving and i'll talk thank to you. you later okay bye-bye thank you